if you want to get started with coding, then challenge yourself and go through this short course. In this course, we're gonna be making the Minesweeper game. And the objective of this course is to get you started with coding. If you've never played Minesweeper before, you can Google Minesweeper and familiarize yourself with the game so that you have a better understanding of what game we're creating here. The reason why I chose Minesweeper is because it has a simple UI, so we can focus more on coding in this course instead of how the game looks, but we always can go fancy with the looks after we build the game. So let's get started. I'm gonna be using Unity Game Engine to create this game, so if you don't have it installed, go ahead and install it, and we'll start from there. The version that I'm gonna be using is 2021.1. It's gonna be a 2D game, and I'll name my project Minesweeper. A clean project is created for us, and currently our scene is empty. So let's go to Hierarchy and right-click to create a UI element, and the element is gonna be an image. In the Hierarchy, you can see when we created this image, we also have canvas that was created and an event system. The canvas was created because image is a UI element and all of the UI elements need to be inside of a canvas to be displayed. This image is gonna be our cell, so we'll rename it accordingly. And I'll switch from the scene view that we currently see right here to the game view so we can see better how our UI looks. In this cell, we want to display the number. So let's go and add a UI element inside the cell. And we can do that by right clicking on cell, go to UI, text. To change to how the text looks, we can go to inspector on the right right here. And the first thing that I wanna do is change the rectangular transform so that it will stretch and fill the whole cell. And we can do that by clicking right here and then holding all down, clicking the option for stretching in horizontal and vertical, and that will stretch our text. Now for the text appearance, for text, let's write one instead here. Switch the font size to 50, and let's center it in the middle for both alignments, horizontal and vertical. So that's how our text is gonna look like. And now let's go back to our hierarchy. And for our cell, let's add another UI. And this one is gonna be an image. And for this image, I want to change the color from white to something gray. So we can do that in the inspector, image color, and switch it to gray. One more thing that I wanna change in the inspector is also stretch to fit the parent. So holding all down, click on the stretch. Now the idea here for this cell is when you click on the image, we'll disable image and it will display our number that is underneath. So that's the start for UI setup. And let's start with what you guys were waiting for, some coding. So go ahead and select the cell. And our logic for our cell is gonna go under here. And the way that we're gonna add the code is by clicking add component. And right here we can write the name of the script. So we'll call it cell, create new, create and add. You can see that a C-sharp file was created. And also you can see the script in our inspector. Now we can double click on the file and that will open up the editor. I'm using Visual Studio Editor and there's a link in the description of a video if you need help setting up Visual Studio. After you have Visual Studio set up, we can continue on. To start with coding, we need to look at some basics. The first basic thing that we're gonna look at is variables. You have already used it in math. So if you used y equals x plus two, those y and x are called variables, and the idea is the same in programming. But one assumption that we do in math is that y and x are numbers, but in programming, we need to specify what type is it. One of the number types that we have in programming are integers. To add a type to our variable, we can say int and then specify x. After that, we can say what that x is equal to, for instance, let's say it equals to two. And integers are whole numbers, so zero, one, two, three, four. But if you want to use decimals, there's several options that we can use in coding, but a float type is mostly used in Unity Engine, so we're just gonna use that. And when we assign a float, let's say to Y, then we need to also add F after the decimal to specify that we're setting a float type. One more basic type that is commonly used is a string. So let's create a variable text. And to set the value for a string, 
we need to put our value in double quotes. And always after we complete the initialization, we need to include the semicolon, just like I did for the other variables. That way we tell the compiler that we're done with that assignment and it can continue to the next line. Now, if you need to store a true or false value for that, we can actually use a bool, which is a Boolean. Let's create another variable is here and you can set it to true or false. So these are four basic types that are commonly used in coding, but there are lots more types of variables that we can create. And in Unity, one type that is used a lot is a game object. And a game object is any of these objects inside of our hierarchy. So we can use the game object type and create a variable. Let's call it image. Now for this image, I actually want to connect the image that is inside of our cell. One of the ways that we can do that is by making this variable public. You can make it public by typing public in front of this game object, save the file by clicking control S and in unity, if you make a variable public, it will be available in the editor. So right here, if I select my cell under our cell script, now we can see one parameter and it's called image. And that is the variable that we just made public to connect the image. We can simply just drag this image from the hierarchy and drop it for a parameter. And unity will connect that variable so that it will be available for us to use in this code. Now, if we want our code to do something, we need to run some functions or methods. And by default in unity, there are two default methods that are created for us. So this void start, which is going to be run before the first frame update. And then we have update, which is going to be run once per frame. So if we want our code to do something, we need to write that code inside of the curly brackets of a method. And for a simple test, let's try to deactivate our image on start. So in start, we can use the image variable to access the options that we have for this variable. We can put a dot and that brings up a list of all of the options that we have for this image variable. If you look at this list, one of the options that we have is set active. You can also start typing active. It's going to filter out all the options that you have that has active in it. So the one that I want to use is set active. So double click on that. And now if you put your mouse over this set active, you can see a short description of what set active is. Set active is actually a method and it's looking for a Boolean variable, a true or false. So if you want to disable the image, we can pass in false and that should disable our image. So in parentheses, let's put false as the value and put semicolon at the end of the line. Save the file by clicking control S. Now if we go back to Unity and click play, as soon as the game starts, you can see that the image game object was set in active. It's grayed out in the hierarchy and we can see the number now. Now, one more useful method I'm going to show here is debug log. So let's find the debug class. And on this class, we can add a period. And under here, we can look for a log method. And this log method is expecting a variable of a type object. And if you see a type object, that means it can accept any type of an object. So we can pass an X here if we want, which is a type of int. And we can also do some math operations here. So we can say X plus Y and it's going to log the result of this math operation. Also, we can print out a string. So let's say you. And if you want to add another string to it, for instance, the text that we have here, we can pass the text variable and add a plus sign. This will concatenate the string and it's going to write that in a single line. Now let's click save and I'll show you where you can find those results. Once you go back to Unity and click play at the bottom right here, we have console. So if you click on the console, you can see those messages being printed out. So there is the two, our value for X and then 3.5, which is the result of X plus Y. And the last one is the concatenated string hi U. So you can experiment with this debug log method and try logging different things here. But we'll stop with this for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at on click events and much more. So stay tuned for that. Click on the like button if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing and have fun coding.